All right, welcome to day one of Mars, the Mid-Atlantic Women's Rugby Showcase. We are about to witness the EGRL Elite Girls Rugby League Championship game. The championship match is between Doylestown, Pennsylvania, and Morris Rugby, New Jersey. I am Marjorie Linares. I am a coach for U14 at Morris Rugby, and we have with us Phaedra Knight. Hello. It's a pleasure to be here today. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Very, you. very excited for today, for the big festivities of Morris, of Mars. That's a slip. <laughs> Looks like Morris is taking control right away. Yep. Nice big carry there across the 50. It is. And a Kugelman scrum half. That is Sydney Sibilia with a run on the wing. And she just squirted up the left yep. side. Long runner. Yeah. Broke away from the masses and puts it down. That's yeah. that's a that was a strong run there by number eight. Not wasting any time putting points on the board. That's the best way. Yeah. Talked to the girls a little bit before the match, and uh, some of them were a little nervous. And I said, Hey, you know what? Nerves go away with the first hit. Yeah. That first big run, and so. And drawing the first blood too. Absolutely. So these are the Sibylia sisters, running together, walking together, chatting. <laughs> Great kick by Layla Galarza. Excited to have um, later on join us as well, Steve Lewis, uh, general manager for Rugby United New York. He'll be joining us for the day as I run off to coach the little ones for their <laughs> first game at 11, hopefully. That's awesome. We were very excited to be able to have a dedicated field for the U14 and have multiple generations of women's rugby here today. Yes, such a good thing. When I was playing, you know, you didn't have, I mean, you had very small pockets of U18. Um, uh, rugby players, just players, it just wasn't as developed, right? You no. know, everyone was in college, and to see the evolution of the game to today is, it's just, it's phenomenal. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really have access to any of that, but I'm so happy to be able to witness this grow with, um, especially with the inception of the Elite Girls Rugby League. And seeing how these different clubs around the locally local states are just putting together national level, national quality teams yeah. at such a young age. Some of the U14 girls sometimes try to play at like the skill level. It's good enough for them to play up as well. That's great. You develop good, a good skill set. Yeah. Um, it, it, it puts you at an advantage no matter what your age. So. Yeah. So we have our scrum. Being held. Ball just slipped through the hands and it went slightly forward. Doyle's town mm -hmm. with the knock on. It's going to be a scrum down to Morris, just shy of the 50 meter line. And we talked about nerves in the beginning of the match. That's probably yeah. uh, a consequence of nerves. Yes. You'll get a number of little knock-ons at the beginning of matches. Yeah. I'm sure getting those jitters out in the beginning. 
Uh, that's a nice boot there by the number 10. Good support in the pocket. More support by Doylestown. Great ceiling of Ruck. Uh, Morris has recovered. Unlucky. Yeah, really unlucky. Yeah. Morris was in a good position. They advanced the ball good 20 meters up the way. But they're still in good field position. Put a little bit of pressure here on Doylestown uh, defensively. Good drive. It's, it's pretty good looking scrum there. Nice yeah. flat backs. I'm yeah. I'm impressed. And they're both they're both getting pretty low. Yeah. Nice support and offload. Strong. That was a big carry by Maggie Austin for New Wales Town. That's Lily Fisk getting driven out to the ground. That number four for Doylestown. It's good pressure there by Morris to come up. Coming up on the defense. But that that support on those uh, attacking rucks is is quite impressive too. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> steal. Turn oh, away, turn over just like that. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, that was lightning fast. Turned it over, but knocked it, it on. Yeah, yeah, didn't see it, and then all of a sudden. Yeah, Emily Dobbs had it. Wow, that was a that was a great take though. Going back by Doylestown, that was number twelve, Maggie Austin. She's got four years of rugby experience. She played her first three years in the pack as a second row, and then turned into a center. Oh, natural transition. Isn't yeah, it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think she, she probably just didn't want to be in the second row. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anna Kugelman running up with the ball off the back of the scrum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, here we have Sydney running up again. Good support. Now Emily, the hooker, she's only been playing a year and has become quite a presence with the Morris high school team. Well, that's quite impressive. That's good athleticism, yeah. you know. Yeah. And always a great attitude. That's always a smile on her face. Doesn't that. matter what she's doing. Super. That was good hands there by number 12. Yeah. Scoop that ball Caitlin up. Caitlin Maroney. Yeah. And keeping those feet active in the tackles, just getting an extra go-forward ball for, for Morris. There they go and again. There we go. There they go again. Persistence. Wins every time. That was a nice carry. It was just good patient phase play by Morris. They yes. worked the ball to Discipline. the left. Yeah, the left side of the field. They just used their support. I'm in, I, I'm just gonna say I'm I'm impressed with the level of skill, um, the ability to maintain ball phase after phase. Uh, very good effort. I think what I've really enjoyed seeing all of these uh, teams is develop their communication skills at such a young age to communicate rugby effectively while they're on the pitch. From all the teams that we've watched play throughout the season. And also the endurance of being able to travel so much to play games as well. Yeah, that's... Sometimes four hours, you know, weekends, four hours of travel. I'm sure we were all fa all too familiar in our <laughs> early days as oh well. My. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. 
those long trips, those yeah. long road trips. <laughs> oh, yeah. Played with uh, the New Orleans Half Moons for about five years and played the South Union and had to travel to you know New Orleans to Atlanta, eight-hour drives to, that's, and, to and, get and a game get out, in. And get out of the car and go play <laughs> rugby. That's, that's, that's impressive. Yeah, like Caitlin in t in play. Good support. Now Ashley is a freshman. Amanda, sorry, Amanda is a freshman number fourteen. She just moved up from her U fourteen days. I think Morris may be playing the advantage here. Mm. Offside. Just, I'm just impressed with, again with the, the awareness. Of these players <laughs> to know what to do under these circumstances. Yeah. Very well coached. Yep. <laughs> that young lady looks like number eight. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Yeah. Trying to play the quick ball, but was stopped. Oh, we go strong running again and again. Yes. to see if Doylestown doesn't get, oh, good boot. Nice. Great boot by Layla. And Doyle, Doylestown desperately looking to get on the board here. And that was a strong defensive stand, but didn't get there quite soon enough. Actually, player didn't roll away in the ruck, and Morris is going to take that quickly. Oh, big stand-up tackle there by number 10 for Doylestown. That was Maddie Doyle. Oh, and look at that sneak right up next to the ruck. That's number six for Mora. Still on her feet, dragging players as she goes. Eventually being brought down. Morris just moving the ball out to the right side of the field. They've got a couple of opportunities on both ends, but not before Doylestown takes it back. Stolen in play. Uh, 
That's a big tackle there by number 11. Doyle Stone still active on their feet, playing right on the edge of the of the pitch. And the uh, offsides by Morris will give Doylestown another opportunity to advance. And they take it quick. They are ready to run. Oh, and that's a nice run there. She got a little head of steam on her, but her support, yeah, but her support was just slightly late. They got there. Got the advantage. Morris playing the ball, actually not rolling out of the out of the way, not rolling away in the tackle. And Morris just getting stacked with penalties during this era of play. And I think that's probably going to be called forward. And it was. Referee wants to have a little conversation here with the captain or one of the players. But that was. So before the, uh, before the actual forward pass, there was a penalty. So that's where we're going to start from. Doyle's Town getting an opportunity here to set up a good penalty play. And that was a fatal blow. Forward pass. Unforced error by Doylestown. They're going to give the ball back to Morris in this scrum. This Morris-Doylestown rivalry is steeped in history. Many of the players of these teams have been playing against each other since they were 10 years old. So it's always, always a good game with them. And Morris is on the run on the front foot. Nice. Thank you. Take there and big hit. And you see players getting stepped on all over the place. Part of the match, part of the game. That's number three with the big carry for Morris, Mackenzie McIntosh, she's a junior. Finally being brought down. And Morris pushing the ball out right to Elizabeth Hansen, and she breaks through clean. And the shirt tackles will not avail as she dots it down for another try. Morris taking a commanding lead in this first half. Doylestown sh has shown glimmers of excellence with their turnover ball, and they've proven that they can actually run. They just need to piece together more phases of play and maintain possession. They've got to eliminate the errors, the penalties. I want to note that Doylestown is playing without five starting players today due to injury and the Youth Rugby Nationals taking place in Ohio this weekend. They are, they're starting a majority of their U14 players and are excited to see what they can do. So this is a very young Doylestown play, team, but they're missing starters, really uh, true star players like Savannah Hines, uh, Nola Flynn, who's a scrum half, and Izzy uh, Delter Deltergo, who normally plays Locke. Also missing Alani Marks in the centers and Nora Rosenberg in the second row. So this is a very, again, a very young Doylestown team. But there are no better ways of getting this experience than just putting in the action. Morris looking quite ready to go. Oh. 
And that's a nice take there by number eight for Morris. Sydney Sibilia put the first points on the board for Morris. And then another big carrier by the try scorer Elizabeth Hansen. That's a good pick up there by Morris on the loose ball. And they look to move it right. There's plenty of space out right. And that's offsides by Doylestown. So they're going to march back 10. And Morris is going to take the kick, it seems. That's a, it's going to be a big kick. And it just clears touch. Bounced inbound and out. So Morris will take it here. Just 10 meters inside of the 50. Doyle's Town 50. And they're dropping. There's short line out, five. Five man line out here. And they're looking to run those forwards through to probably open up space outside and free the backs. That's a good line out throw. Morris looking to just move it, and that's a good run there. It's number 12, Caitlin Maroney. And going weak, bringing it back to the weak side, number 15, with a nice roll, Molly McPherson, the buy time for her support to get there. And then the pickup by Elizabeth Hansen. She gets stripped, incidentally, into tackle. That was number four, Lily Fisk, the eighth grader for Doylestown. But Morris picks it back up. And they're looking to threaten outright. Kizzy McIntosh in on the carry, goes to ground, and Morris spins the ball out. Nice hands, putting it through, going all the way out to the wing, really stretching this defense for Doylestown. Working that ball, stressing the defense. Pushing it in again there. Keeping those feet active. Morris gets in yet again. That was a great team effort. Morris doing an impressive job turning the ball over, moving it from the left side of the field to the right side of the field quite efficiently, letting the ball do the work, having players run on at pace, and just keeping their feet active. Nice work, Amanda. <laughs> in both 2021 and 2022, these two teams tied in their 15 season opener, and it's rare for it to happen once. But in 2022, the match looked like it would go to Morris early on, but. Doylestown Dragons kept battling. They scored an important try at the end of the first half, and then they spent the first 10 minutes of the second half taking the lead. Morris consequently lost a player to a yellow card for a tip tackle, but they regained their momentum, scoring late and sealing the tie with a conversion kick as time expired. So they finished their second match in 2022 31-31. So Doylestown here kicking again. I am going to be joined by the highly esteemed Steve Lewis momentarily. Morris ooh, running it strong. Nice big strong run there by the number six. 
That's Nisa McLaughlin. She's a junior and a USA pool player, no doubt. The U18 program. That program is headed up by Martha Danes, who is here scouting. Doylestown with the turnover, taking the quick tap there. And the ball is stolen, and I think the referee is reaching into his pocket to pull out a yellow card. That's number two, Emily Starkweather going to the bin for 10 minutes. I'm not certain what that, that infraction was. But the discipline on both of these teams could probably get a bit better. Lots of penalties so far in this match. So they're sure both coaching staffs are going to talk about it at the half. Oh, my God. And that's just an outstanding run there by number 10. Pace for days, Doyle Sound. That's Maddie Doyle. She's the captain, playing by and leading by example for sure, but Doyle Sound with a mishandle. Lose the ball to Morris again. But going back to Maddie Doyle, she, uh, she'll be playing with the PA All-Stars tomorrow. She's a twin, and she can eat a gallon of ice cream all by herself. That's... That's impressive. It's something that I can't do. Lactose intolerance doesn't allow that. <laughs> and we're back into the scrum. We've had a number of these today. And they've been quite well executed by both teams. Nice and low. Backs are flat. But that's a big push by Morris. And they take it up that narrow right channel. But the support just isn't there in time. Ball carrier felt compelled to hold on to the ball. And Doylestown regains possession. And we are going to have yet another card. And that's huge. That was number 21 for Morris going to the bend. So that's Aaron O'Brien. That's two yellow cards. Number two, Emily Stalk. Weather is already there. Now Morris playing short two with 13 players. This is a huge opportunity for Doylestown to exploit the mismatch in numbers as they take the ball up. But Morris just getting right in there and turning the ball over with 13 players. And when you've got that sort of fancy deception, ball carried in two hands, it creates nothing but a mess for the defense. And Morris taking it up. That's number 30 offloads to number 15. That was Gonzalez to McPherson. And Morris just unfazed by the two players in the bin. They're just going at it, taking it nice and strong. Number four, Abby Ammerman. Ammerman. And the ball goes back into the hands of Hansen. And that try attempt is held up. That uh, was a good defense there by number three, Daisy Jabala, the ninth grader, playing her first season of rugby for Doylestown. Morris takes it. Quick take. And they get in yet again. That's number seven for Morris, Emily Dobbs, the captain. 
Committed to Virginia Tech. Showing no mercy. And again, just want to note, Morris is playing with 13 players. 13 players. Yep. But seemed unfazed. I'm back. Excellent. <laughs> I am back after some technical difficulties. I know Steve Lewis is around and will be joining us. Perhaps that, after, band up here. <laughs> after potentially halftime. I'm I'm so I'm impressed with the Doylestown team because a lot of these girls are very young. They're part of their U14 program. Yes. And although they're you know they're down, uh, you know. Uh, that has not a, stopped them from putting in big hits. Yeah, they they're putting in big hits. They're they're not they're not giving up. Let's put it that no. way. I've also been impressed with how comfortable the players are talking, communicating with the ref. Yeah. At such a young age, especially as a teenager, you're not really feeling super comfortable talking to anyone, let alone <laughs> a ref. But the coaches have empowered them with knowledge of rugby and confidence to be able to know their sport and know the rules and know how to communicate with the ref. Offsides by Morris. Here, number 30. This is their first season playing. Yeah. That's quite impressive. Yeah. My first season playing, I was offsides all day. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't have that discipline, so she's doing a great job of staying. I don't staying think back. I knew how to run my first season. <laughs> That's a big tackle by Morris. Ooh. Tackler not rolling away in timely enough fashion. And you see at Doylestown, number 17, just what? scooting across the field. That's Liz Johnston, not six years up. of rugby experience. And having those big runs firing up for the rest of her teammates to push forward even when they're down. Stopped. Uh, yeah, abruptly. Rosado <laughs> hit a wall there. Yeah, very abrupt. Offsides. These penalties are just back to back. Mounting up. They got a player down, and I think that's number seven, Maddie Rosado. When she hit that wall, she she got a little banged up. She can play in the back line, but has been playing mostly at flanker this year. But the ninth grader getting a little bit of attention over on the mm -hmm. sideline. Hello there, everyone who's watching. Hey. Welcome to yeah. the Mid-Atlantic Women's Rugby Showcase. If you just logged on to see a family member, a friend, or just love rugby and can't get enough of it. And if you're nearby, come on down. Definitely. Definitely stop by. Check out the games. There'll be some food soon. And please check the U.S. Women's Rugby Foundation Pop-Up Museum celebrating the 50th anniversary of the first women's rugby game in the USA. They have a beautiful display of history and um, yeah, we'll get to see multiple generations of women in rugby throughout the day. When did you, wh when did you play rugby? 
Uh, I started in 2001 in Venezuela originally, okay. Okay. and then I moved to New Orleans and played with the Half Moons okay. and kind of just lived around the world, uh, played in Sydney, Australia, okay. awesome. Sydney Uni, and um, and then just recently I call it my retirement team, <laughs> Morris Rugby, but I've been okay. doing a lot of coaching for U14 for the little ones. Awesome. Call them little, but a couple of them are my height, and I'm pretty <laughs> tall. That's awesome. It's the one sport that, you know, uh, doesn't matter where you go, when you meet a rugby player, you've, you've met a friend for life. So oh, that's a, absolutely. certainly a, an anomaly. And now we have the illustrious Steve Lewis. Steve Lewis. Thank Adrian you Knight so much. In the house. How are you? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm excellent. Now I'm in the right uh, part of New Jersey. Ah, oh, that New Jersey transit was taking you all over the place, yeah, eh? I had a little mishap. I uh, didn't read the map correctly. <laughs> Ended up in Clifton, New Jersey, not Hap Clinton, New Jersey. But I'm here now. I'm Hap happy to see you. Happens all the time. <laughs> happy for you to be here. What's up? So what's shaking? First right. half, Morris on top. Morris on top, de pretty definitively. Um, several tries to nil. But I will say they're missing two players. They have two players in the sin bin right now. Um, this Doylestown team is quite young, as I've noted over the course of the match. A number of their players are from their U14 program. They're showing, you know, showing some really nice skill sets. Just got to string it together more consistently. That was a nice steal. Picked it out of her hand. A big carry by number 30. That's number 11 streaking up the right side of the field. That's Emily Van Doren. She's a sophomore. Plays number 14, too. She played both sides of the, of the field in the wing position. Nice pick there by the scrum half before she gets flung to the ground. But support right there immediately as Morris continues left and back into the hands of number 30 who really kind of started this song Taryn Gonzalez Jeez. looks like a high tackle signal so it'll be a penalty to Morris about five yards out and there she goes number seven Emily Dobbs in again the captain herself for the try. Yeah, it's just uh, basic physics there. Larger human, smaller human, <laughs> close to the line. Pretty much, pretty much. She started, Emily started playing, or started the U19, actually U14 girls tackle program at Morris with her dad, who had the head coach, he's a head coach for this Morris group. The famous, William, the famous William Dobbs yeah, yeah. Esquire. <laughs> She'll head to Virginia Tech in the fall. I talked to her a couple years ago back at the World Cup in San Francisco. Yeah, the, the, the smallest program, you know, obviously one of the the better run, better coach, better organized in the country. You know, there's mm. a, it's a real club in every sense of the word. Men's team, women's team, boys, girls. A terrific institution in this part of the world. Yeah, there. I remember coming down here many moons ago at a camp. About when you were young and good looking? Young and just unstoppable. That's it. Now that I'm old and stopped. Stoppable. <laughs> Eminently stoppable. Stopped. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what, age, Pedro, what age did you start playing rugby at? I started playing rugby, uh, I think it was 22, 21, 21. 
That was first year in law school when I first started. So you discovered it quite a bit later, which yeah. was the the standard at the time, right? Yeah. We, we didn't have these tournaments and organizations and leagues. Um, Didn't. When did you start playing rugby? Well, I was five. Well, it's it's so it's, it's but, such a but yeah, twenty-five not, years ago. Yeah, twenty-five five. years ago. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Across the pond. Correct. Didn't have a choice. Went to school, played rugby. Perhaps one day that will be the 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 norm here. <laughs> That's the end of the first half, Mr. Steve. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Morris dominant, as we said before. Um, but just, you know, to discuss this league, right? Elite Girls Rugby League, the new inception this year. Um, a terrific step forward, I think, because, well, you know, in terms of trying to elevate the quality of the rugby that's played. Um, certainly teams have consolidated, but trying to get a regional competition, which is what this is, and perhaps expand it, expand it further uh, going forward is, is the way to go. As you know, when you're trying to develop players, just setting aside the pure fun aspect, and we're all here having a great time, but when you're actually looking to identify and develop uh, younger girls in terms of national team, what have you, then this quality of competition is exactly what's needed. You, you have to, competition is, the primacy of competition is Absolutely. undoubted. So, Absolutely. So the more of this stuff, the merrier, which is why, um, you know, personally and obviously with Rugby New York, we're very happy to support it. That's great. Perhaps we can get Martha Danes over here before the end of the match to talk a little bit about the U18 program, National U18 program. She's walking the grounds. Yeah, some news there this morning. They're starting to get uh, some competition again, so she'd be the person to discuss that. Yeah. But um, obviously from a national team perspective, the, the women's team are over or down under. They're not over, they're down under, and they've got their second test tonight against Australia. Australia, right. Um, what, what are your feelings about that? Have you been on top of this tour much? Or? I haven't been uh, on top of it too much. I did notice that they didn't, you know, they, they fell to Canada, which, you know, for the team, it seems like when they first step off a plane and the first matches on these tours tends to be one of their weaker ones. They get better as the tour progresses, and so... Um, yeah, I mean, once again, it, it's, it's terrific that you know, women eagles are getting this opportunity to get three games played down there. You know, mm -hmm. as a dry run, three or four months before the World Cup. Uh, once again, good competition, right? Canada, Australia, New Zealand. Um, both Canada and the U.S. obviously missing players who were in that Premiership final. So, so not perhaps a true test of full strength for either side, but still, uh, you know, a strong win for Canada. Um, I think five players went back, and then the Premiership. You know, cavalry has arrived, so they're actually in New Zealand now and available for this evening's game. So okay. a little bit of a switch up in the lineups. Yeah, that'll make a big, that'll make a huge difference. There's so many of the U.S. players that are playing in the Premiership. Um, well, when, when you look at the composition of the team, probably going to the World Cup, right? You've got the the, the ones from the eight to nine from the Premiership to come in. Yeah. You've got some of the sevens crossover players to come in. Yeah. So it, it's a matter of trying to. Uh, it's getting cohesion between the, the existing group, that premiership group, and the seventh, the seventh players. Yeah. That, that is ultimately what you're picking the World Cup team from. Yeah. Are you planning to go to the World Cup this year? I am not. I have a no New Zealand for you? No New Zealand. I've been there once before, 1994, uh, when I was an infant. Uh, 1994, <laughs> it's a miserable tour. It was three weeks. Oh, yeah, I've played as an infant at Fly Half, and um, <laughs> it rained pretty much every day, and as you know, I'm a passionate rugby man, yeah. and it was the first time, you know, it was two practices a day, and we we're getting the hell beat out of us, and I just had a horrible tour. Yep. So probably the only tour I haven't enjoyed, so I'm due a return trip. You are. Antipodes in better circumstances. You absolutely are. 
What about you? Did you ever play down there? I did. Uh, first time I played was with it was my actually it was my second test for the U.S. Um, in ninety. I guess it was ninety nine, and then I returned to play with the all world team after the two thousand two World Cup. It was actually in two thousand three. For under, yeah, under some cool circumstances and with some cool players from around the world. So that sounds all right. It was it was a fun time. And but an, I, an exalted company. Yeah, yeah. Some 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 real characters, mm -hmm. some legends. Jill Jill Burns. Um, Dara Suasua was really overseeing the, um, the, that entire uh, event, um, and the Frank Bouvier was coaching. So it was it was a uh, quite quite a quite a cask. What position were you at that time? I was actually at prop at that time. First prop. World Cup was at prop. Uh huh. Small numbers on the back. Huh? Small uh -huh. numbers. Yeah, Small up numbers. Finally. Fessing up. <laughs> yeah, I was all these years thinking you were an athlete. Not that props are unathletic. Don't <laughs> get the wrong impression. It wasn't long. It wasn't a long stay though. I, after that, I started transitioning to the back row. Um, so, so did you start off as a prop? Started off as, actually as a center. Right. And uh, Kathy Kathy Flores uh, uh, thought that I could. She, well, I think there, there was a greater need of mobility in the front row. I had the strength to play in the front row um, at that time, but the speed, you know, I could, you know, I could survive in the back line. So I, I will take wh whatever opportunity I have to play with the national team at that time. And so Absolutely. I took the, I took the bait, I took the bite, I took the dive and, um, Played that the first few years at, at prop, and then moved out, like I said, into the into the back row, going forward. So it's quite an experience. Yeah, and I, th I think one of the things that the uh, one of the benefits of starting the game earlier, or playing yeah. the game earlier, is you can try out a couple of different positions. So these, right. these girls here, you know, at this age, shouldn't be necessarily typecast. Right. And and to get minutes to get time at different positions yeah different levels is, is just helps your, your you know complete rugby iq it um, does it does it's a long half time it is 10 minutes eh? Yeah. it's a long 10 minutes What's on tap for uh, Rugby United going forward? Well, obviously, it's a big day for us. We're in the playoffs tonight in Atlanta. So, Rugby New York in the first round of the uh, Major League Rugby cha uh, Championship Series. Play at 8.30 this evening. Will you be hopping on a plane? No, I will not. I have a high school boys all-star tournament tomorrow, all day in Hoboken, which was already in the books, as well as this event. So, uh, not traveling with the team to Atlanta. Okay. What are your thoughts? What do you think? What's going to happen? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, players are back now from injury. We don't really, uh, not you know, have almost have a full complement to pick from. So uh, I feel on our day, if we play to our potential, we play more rugby than Atlanta. But I, I don't, you can't knock Atlanta. They're a very competent, efficient, effective team. Yep. Um, and they're, they're hard to beat, particularly down there. So. That'll be a that'll be a cracker tonight at eight thirty on FS two. Excellent.
Uh, hands in, hands in. Emily Dobbs with the hands in on the ruck. Uh, that's a good double team on defense. And good sportsmanship, too. Making sure the player is good. Morris continuing with the theme. Oh, uh, full line out. That's nice insertion there by the wing. Then fly half sneaks up the side of the ruck and ball gets turned over again and again. So we have a I think first knock on by Morris, there should be a scrum at Doylestown. Yes. Captain Liz Johnson putting the ball in, 12th grader. Six years of experience in the game. She signed with Westchester Rugby for the fall. The primary position is actually hooker, but because of the numbers they're missing today, she is filling in at scrum half. That's a different perspective. Yeah. So I was saying before, getting time in different places. That's right. Different things. It's all good for your education of a young rugby player. That is so true. Morris back to the full count with 15 players after playing the last 10 minutes of the first half short too. A couple of players in the, uh, the naughty chair. What was yeah. that for? Didn't get the infraction. Free kick there to Doylestown. Didn't yeah, hands in again yeah. by Morris. That's that's two in a row actually they've given away at ruck time. Yeah, it's Number twelve is on her way. Aust uh, Maggie Austin, tenth grader. She gets it again. Yeah, but a sustained possession here for Dolstein. They had a good break there in the centers. A little messy from the scrum, but still in possession. Morris takes it, takes it away from him. That supporting the rooks just isn't consistent enough, and Morris is just looking to tee off. They crowd numbers into the ruck. Yeah, loads of numbers out right here. Can they yeah. move it effectively? One more. 
And that's the young lady who's been playing, playing her first season of rugby, Steve. It's Taryn mm. Gonzalez, the big run. She's had a couple of those this game. And Morris just continues to pressure this Doylestown defense. A little bit of singular running, but it's still effective enough. And the ball gets turned over. Ah, <laughs> uh, unfortunate knock there. It's like number four, Lily Fisk. Yeah, I think of this sort of one sort of pattern that's pretty clear is the rocks are pretty messy. Yep. Um, it seems not necessarily interpretation, but there's uh, certainly an area of the game that could be improved and cleaned up, I think. Um, yeah. The, the, the looks like that first support player is not securing the ball. They're not nice and low over to protect. Yeah, as you know, a lot of things go into good ruck rights, ball presentation, it's fighting right. the tackle, it's second That's play right. coming in, body position. Lo lots of small things that have to go right for it to be an effective uh, ruck. Knock forward, forward, or actually forward pass. Yeah, always a danger when you've got three fields on the go, a couple of different whistles. Which one's ours? <laughs> right. I think that just might look, have been what happened just, there. Just look, look at the hand motion of the, the ref. Uh, that's, that's what I did that time. I see a tent over there with uh, PSK stuff. Is that is that some kind of famous fashion line? Yeah. Something you want to discuss uh, on air? Yeah, sure. PSK Collective. And what does PSK stand for? Ah, oh, it's the initials of my name. We don't need to divulge all that information, but everybody knows who Phaedra Knight is. We'll leave that S as a mystery. <laughs> I'm, I'm intrigued. Yeah. <laughs> Happy to have the, the, the representatives out, though, to represent the brand and give out some gear to these ladies this weekend. And there it is. Yeah, Morris moving the ball well to the left, using the width of the pitch, recycling the ball a couple of times and then just punching it in from close range. And that's when they've had their most success with these, with these scores is when they move that ball across the pitch. Number Let's six, the scorer there. Number six was the scorer? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Number six. It's the far side of the field from my uh, yeah. eyes. Nessa McLaughlin called her name before. Uh, uh, yeah, I think. Uh, She's a. In, apparently, her father's a famous famous cameraman. Would that be correct? Is he, is he the man behind the production here? The yeah. one man <laughs> making this all happen? That's all it takes. So I'm sure that. that uh, Score helped uh, notch Nessa and, that, and that's a bit. terrific kick. Terrific kick. Sh we should be recognized there. Probably seven, eight in from the touchline. That's Good a job. Just had a couple of those today. Speaks to the skill level of these players. S certainly been an improvement since I last watched a high school match. The tackling, much more technical, and you obviously see fewer injuries as a result. So that's certainly a welcome thing. Doylestown is just looking to score. They just want to score. Dolls down with a kick. Looks like they're shaping left. Okay. 
There's the kick. Has not gone 10. Decision for Morris. Restart or uh, scrum again. I think they're asking Doylestown to re -kick. repeat the favour. <laughs> They like catch. They do well with ca obviously catching, fielding the ball in the air. Get a good head of steam on the run. Smart decision. It's going a wee bit deeper. At ten again. Speculative kick, middle of the field, regathered by. Oh, that's a crunching tackle. Hit of the day so far. Yeah, they keep coming, Doylestown, despite that. Not afraid of the physical challenge. Ah, oh, beautiful, beautiful steal there. Perfect body position. Just got right over the ball. Took it away. Good counter up from Doylestown. Good competition. Penalty advantage to them, but they keep coming. Nice hands there by number 20 for Doylestown. It's Ashley Volante. Ah, just that bit of a mishandle and we're back to square one. That young lady's done a lot of work today. Elizabeth Hansen for Morris. Quite a bit of real estate she's covered. And it just opens up these opportunities on the wing. And we got another penalty, Steve. Indeed. Far sight in front of the enthusiastic and vociferous Morris support. <laughs> Couldn't quite see the infraction, but clearly a Morris penalty. I think it was uh, diving over in the rut. Cloudy day here in cosmopolitan Clinton, New Jersey. Yeah, it is. Not much, not much of a breeze. Good temperature, perfect conditions really for rugby. Sun will find its way out hopefully before the end of the day. <laughs> Bit overcast. Who's your favorite weather to play in? This is good weather to play in, right? It's, it's not too hot. And anyone can play with a dry ball. So what's the challenge? The, I think there's a challenge of 15 other players on the other side. <laughs> and the demons in my head. So there you go. <laughs> well, you like playing in the well, growing up mud fest? Growing up in Scotland or Ireland, you don't have much of a choice, you know. So yeah, it's yeah. a dry ball was a treat. And Morris is taking it back. They are hunting for their next one. That's Elizabeth Hansen. Looks like she's going to take it in for another try. She's trying to trying to get it center, but doesn't make it. But she puts it down. And she's just really kind of imposing her her will on. Doylestown defense is running through players all day long. And at this point, I think it would just, again, it would just uh, 
satisfy this Doyle's Town group to score a try. All right, Steve. Another kickoff to Morris. See if this goes 10. And it does. Right into the hands of the Anna Kugelman, nifty scrum half. That's a good tackle by Dongstein. Four or five players on the right here. Once again, a good tackle when perhaps the ball could have been shifted. <laughs> Gonzalez just puts her head down and Barrels into the defense, but it's good enough to advance her team to the 50 and set this up. Again, numbers on the left here for Morris. Good tackle again, though, from Dolstein. Center on center. Ball was spilled. Dolstein now in the counter attack. The winger on the right hand side's got a bit of space, and oh, she may wow. well be gone. She has got some pace to burn, man. Where has she been for the last 60 minutes or so? What an outstanding run, and she centers it. Yeah, terrific score for Dolstein there. It was all, all predicated based on that initial hit in the midfield, a jarring tackle. Ball came loose. And Two sets of hands from Dolstein and the speedster on the wing. Well, that's an eighth grader. That's Finishing the job. What's an eighth grader when they're the, at home? I mean, what age is that? Akarde. How old is that, though? Let me explain. Oh, eighth grade my is, hold on, Tan is fifth. Hold on, ten, I'll do, I think it's 13. 13. Maybe she's thir no, am I wrong? Maybe, 13, 14, yeah, 13. Excellent, terrific effort from she, the youngster. She played rugby, flag rugby for six years. This is her first year in tackle. Well, she didn't get tackled there. Yep. Thirteen, eight. Eighth grade, wow. That was that was quite a run. And you can see the Doyle's town that just restored a bit of just energy and Absolutely. enthusiasm Absolutely. to those, these girls. I mean, this is like yeah, this is a young bunch, so it's not easy I mean, up against it, against that older team, more physical team perhaps. No. It's just easy to shut up shop and head to lunchtime, but that was a, a great effort there. Great character shown by Doylestein and no little skill. Doylestown recovers what could have been a disaster for them. And now it's the old adage, right? Put hands on it. Uh, 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 attempted fly kick by Morris didn't work. Doylestown regained possession, got a penalty, and here they go again.
No, that's terrific. Oh, what terrific. a check okay, there. Coming on at pace. Yep. Moving at pace. Man, that's number 13, Regan King, 11th grader. And she is in there. Two in a row. They're striking back. Say that what? name again. Regan King. I know her. You know her. That's been to West Point camps. I just didn't that's recognize a, her. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, she drives almost three hours each way to practice. That's yep. a dedicated young lady. Uh, she is indeed. And that's uh, another terrific score there from Dawnstown. Is to come back on two in a row in under a minute. Great effort by them. Great character. Yeah, it's great character. She's great character. When she's not training for rugby, she's a volunteer firefighter in her community. That's, again, that's impressive. She's had a couple of big runs this match. Couldn't quite find the space at the end of the day, but she certainly did this time. Yeah, I'm going to just reward there. Are you working at all with West Point? No. No, it's over. Nope. It's uh, in the past. Okay. That was a good. You guys had a good thing going there. You and Lara Vivolo. Yeah, it was terrific. Thoroughly enjoyable. It was a great group of uh, girls. Great group of athletes. Um, and unfortunately, that the, the, I think our big chance at the sevens a national title was the the COVID season. We finished second in the CRC the year before. Mm -hmm. Ten of players coming back that year. Um, but unfortunately, as with everyone, we lost a season. And yeah. That, that chance was gone. Um, that having been said, Sammy Sullivan of that West Point crew made our debut for the Eagles a couple of days ago. So pleased to see that. That's great. Ah, big turnover there. A Morris. And it goes back to Doylestown. I think back to that West Point thing, I think what's interesting, if you look at women's college rugby, um, if you take out the two big dogs, Life and Lindenwood, then the Northeast is actually the, the best, most competitive league between Dartmouth, Harvard, West Point, Quinnipiac. Right. Um, this is where the best women's college rugby is played, in my opinion, in terms of a league. Yeah, I agree with you. That's operated, that's Naira. Um, who operate that. And a good many of those uh, programs are varsity programs or varsity type support, which is uh, critical. Makes such a difference having that support. There Great move by Dolstein. Here they go again. Here they go again. Woo! Watch out, baby. Number 12. Smaggy Austin got pulled down by the jersey. It was a great tackle. Yeah, good track back by Morris Flyoff, who's actually having a pretty good game. Well-balanced game, attack offensively, defensively. And Reagan Keane again with a carry, keeping the ball alive. Sneaky pick there. No support with her. Maggie Walker with a nice run. A little bit high in that ruck. Let's see, she's not down on the ground yet. There we go. Doylestown fighting, man. And Morris ends up with it. As you can see, Doylestown is really fighting. They want another try. They're going to have to push out left, shut down this attacking run by Morris' number 20. To Marissa Kogan. And they're just wearing down this defense. Doylestown. Ah, big hit there. By Doylestown. And that's a penalty to Doylestown. A player holding on to the ball on the ground. Good defensive effort. That was that was a phenomenal hit by Maggie Doyle, the captain. And luckily clears touch. Kick for touch. Not perhaps the best effort, but it did the trick. Did it? 
moved the ball up the field about 20 yards. Doylestown with a throw in just outside the Morris 22. I mean, there's so many ninth graders and eighth graders on this pitch right now. In the green jerseys. Oh, nice line out play. A little sneaky move. And she doesn't step out of touch. Ah, oh, but she gets pushed out. Good effort. That was yes. a good play. Cunning and guile. Trickery at the yeah. front of the line out from Doylestown. Yeah, Lily Fisk. Eighth grader again. Another eighth grader. And this is one of two games for her today. She'll be playing a little bit later, as mentioned earlier, on the PA Rugby All-Star team. A full complement of matches today and tomorrow here in Clinton in this Women's Rugby Showcase. Didn't look particularly straight to me, but that's okay. I'm not there. Support there. Barely. Yeah. Ah. Another ruck, another dog's breakfast. Dog's down still with the ball. Nice little offloads in before the tackle. And there you go, number 12, Maggie Austin, the 10th grader. Three in a row for Doylestein now. They have come alive. Austin played three years in the pack as a second row, and then she turned center. She'll be playing on the PA All-Star team tomorrow. Look at this. I don't know, youth is prevailing here. <laughs> Coming alive in the second half. Taking advantage, they didn't give up. That's just excellent. Good attitudes. Kick is no good. But the attitudes and the play are for this duel. Yeah, body language quite a bit different. Unsuccessful conversion, but they're coming back now. Having put three on the board in about 10 minutes. <laughs> All right, Morris, what is their answer? Need to go back to what was working before when they control possession, leverage their superior physicality. They've, uh, they've gone off the boil here in the last 10. Yeah, you know, and I think a lot of the mistakes they're making are just rushing it, right? They don't have uh, the pressure of being down, so they don't really need to rush it. They should take their time, set up their plays, just execute, work through things. I know there's an excitement to want to score tries. But this is the very nature of these two teams, that back and forth game. You know, I mentioned earlier they tied in 2021 20, and 2022. And the trend is that Doyle's Town comes back in the second half. It's just kind of how the game, the dynamic works between them. Big collision there by them with the Reagan King and the number eight. But they go in phase, or actually it was the number six for for Morris. And, and they take it away again. Morris is off to the races, pushing it out left. And they've got numbers and space on the left side, but they elect to run it. Back up center field. And there they go, exploiting that space. Ooh. And their hands. Oh, tackling the far side there. Yeah.
Looks like a player's down, getting some attention there. Yep, she was moving at a fair clip, and uh, it was a, a physical tackle for sure. What a testament to these teams, uh, these players' fitness. There have been few injuries today during this match. Very few. And there have been some hard hits put on both sides of the line. It's good to see her get up. I think that's number eight. Maybe, perhaps. Sydney, Sibilia. Actually, it's number 15. Yeah. I was wrong. It's Molly McPherson, the junior. You were wrong. I was wrong. That happens sometimes. On occasion. I'm okay to admit it. Sometimes. <laughs> so restart. We'll be on the right hand side of the field. Doylestown's on their 22. They're Putin. What is their chosen plan from here? Struggling in the scrum a wee bit. Morris have won the ball against the head. Again, little indecision there from the Morris ball carrier. You know, uncertainty and hesitation, doubt. That's the enemy, right? When in yeah. doubt, just north south, go forward. And yeah, that's Jojo Mignon. She plays 10, 13, and 15. <laughs> That's it. No trumpet. Nah. No harpsichord. No. Well, maybe. These these scrums have been so well contested. Looks like um, Morris is digging in to their size advantage now and. Starting to shove around this Doylestown pack a bit. They're just getting that early push. And that's good support there by Doylestown. And there she goes again, breaking away number 12. Maggie Austin, and she's been caught every time today, but she will not be caught this time as she places it down between the post and scores yet another try for this Doyle Sound team. They've just come alive in the second half. Wow. Four successive tries. They've got speed, and they know how to... Match that seemed a yeah. foregone conclusion at half time. Yeah. And perhaps they knew this, right? They they weren't. The numbers have tightened somewhat. They didn't seem to be too phased in the first half after getting scored on numerous times. I see why now. This is getting to become a very close game, Steve. Indeed. And Doylestown looking to close a bit yet again. It's we're at a 55-22 score line, but that may change quite rapidly, Steve. The captain, Matty Doyle, pulls away. <laughs> and now we're at 27-55. Wow. 
five tries for Doylestown. When will it stop? I think Maddie was fueled by that gallon of ice cream she eats by herself. A tale of two cities or a tale of two halves. Can you eat a, can you eat a gallon of ice cream in no. one setting? No. It would be ridiculous. <laughs> it's too bad. She can. And she can probably outrun you too. No doubt about that. <laughs> no doubt about that. <sighs> yeah, what a turn up for the books, eh? Mm. Foregone conclusion at half time. Yeah. Not so much. Not so much. Mm. Just short. And that'll do it, Steve. And that said, Pooh was that. That said. Terrific encounter. Great skill shown and exhibited by both sides. A credit to their coaches and parents and all the hard work they've done over the year. Yes, indeed. Both sides contributing. No, no more so than Dolstein on that scintillating second half where they put five tries on the board. Yeah, and just the sportsmanship displayed in this match is awesome. These teams know each other very well, obviously. You can see it. Um, lots of respect and really, just really good rugby. Really good rugby. Do you have an MVP? <sighs> Do I have an MVP? That's why I'll go first. Okay, I'll you tell you me. Yeah, them. a couple of candidates I thought on each side, Reagan King at center, her other center, co-center 12, whose name I don't know. Uh, I thought they both had good games. For Morris, I thought there was some fearsome tackling from back row player, favorite Nessa. And uh, I would have to go with number 10 from Morris. I believe it's Leila Galarza, is that correct? Probably yes. Probably the name. Yeah, I, and uh, I'll agree with you. Yep. She did a great job of just really kind of commandeering the match. Move the ball quite well. That's yeah, in addition to that, though, so we'll, the things you look for as a coach, right? So not just the attack, but she tracked back, made a very good cover tackle, saved a try on the far side. She was also in over a ruck and poached a ball yep. uh, in the middle of the field. So it's an, an all-round game from her, I thought, both offense and defense. So she would be uh, my pick, whether to be an MVP. Well, I will, I will follow your lead on that. Leila or Leila Galarza. Thank you for joining us today. You're welcome.